So how are we going to understand these turbulent, irregular, or chaotic phenomena? Well, I want to start with a mathematical model. And the mathematical model is, uh, is due to Alan Hastings and his group um, from UC Davis. They are looking, we talked a lot about two species models. We talked about the Lotka Volterra, the shark tuna model. And then we also talked about the Holling Tanner model which was more realistic, it had logistic saturation, it had a number of more realistic features, and you remember the behavior that resulted from the model, it was a limit cycle attractor, a stable oscillation. The Hastings model is a very interesting extension of the Holling-Tanner model because this is a model of a food chain. And very simply, we have three species, Z, X, and Y. And Z eats Y, and Y eats X. So how are we going to make this model is really by a pretty straightforward extension of the Holling-Tanner model. So we're going to lay out, following Hastings' work, we're going to lay out a three-variable model where basically we're going to think of Z as a carnivore and Y as a herbivore, and X as a plant. So the herbivores eat the plants, and the carnivores eat the herbivores. So let's make a differential equation. Let's start with the X variable, the plants. So the first thing we're going to assume is that the plants, in the absence of the herbivore, plants grow to a saturation, to a carrying capacity, and are limited by that. So we're going to have an Rx times 1 minus x over k, and that is plant growth. Then, the plants get eaten by the herbivores. So there's going to be a plant, so to speak, meets herbivore, but of course, that's metaphorical because they're not wandering around. But there is definitely going to be a something times y with a minus sign in front of it. And it's going to be how often does the herbivore find plant food, and the form we're going to use here is, as we did in the Holling-Tanner model, it's Ax over 1 plus Bx. You recall that that's just a saturating function, and that says that the herbivores can't eat infinitely many plants. Their appetite for plants saturates. But that is the plant differential equation. Now we need the herbivore differential equation. And in the herbivore differential equation, of course, we want to take this herbivore eats plant and we want to put that in the herbivore equation with a plus sign in front of it instead of a minus sign. And of course the question is how many plants does it take to support one herbivore? And I'm going to call that Q. 
quantity C, in fact C1, and we're going to assume, therefore, that that then applies to all of this eating of plants by herbivores, so it's C1 times A1x over 1 plus B1x times Y. That is basically the same term with the C1 for how many plants you need to feed an, a herbivore. But now the herbivores get eaten also. And they get eaten by the carnivores. And so the carnivores again are going to be eating them in a saturating way and we're going to call that function a2y over 1 plus b2y and that's of course going to be times z because these are the carnivores meeting the herbivores and eating whatever they can up to their saturation. And then we're going to add a natural death term to the herbivores, and we are going to use the natural death rate D1. So that's D1Y. So, you see how this is working. Now we want our carnivore differential equation. And again, we got to take the carnivore meets herbivore and add it positively to the carnivores. And of course, how many herbivores do you need to feed one carnivore? We're going to call that C2. And then just take this whole term and put that right in there, A2y over 1 plus B2y times Z. So this is the positive effect on the carnivores of carnivore meets herbivore. And then we're just going to have a natural death term. And that's going to be D2Z. So this is the food chain model. There are lots of parameters in it. We're going to set a whole bunch of them equal to 1. Uh, we're going to set R and K and C1 and C2 all equal to 1 to get them out of this equation. And we're going to deal with the resulting three variable differential equation. So, the next question is, what behavior follows from this model? And the answer is very interesting. First of all, you can sort of see, beginning to see the outline just by staring at the equations. X and Y are in a sort of a Holling Tanner two variable oscillation with each other. And then Y and Z are in another two variable Holling Tanner oscillation with each other. So we have two oscillators here the XY oscillator and the YZ oscillator. And they're operating on each other. And the result is going to be interesting. So there's very little you can do with this model with paper and pencil. And how we're going to approach it. Later on, we will learn some techniques for evaluating the stability of equilibrium points in this model, but we don't have that yet. And we're interested here not just in the stability of the equilibrium points. We're interested in what is the behavior that is predicted by this model.